Hello and welcome. Today we're looking at two spectacular airports that were added with the world update and can be greatly improved with two free mods from FlightSimTO. With the British Norman Islander from Black Box, we take off from Saba and fly to St. Barthélemy in the Caribbean. Both airfields represent a real challenge. Let's take a look at how they are implemented. Welcome to Saba. Wancho Irauskin Airport is the only airport on Saba, one of the three Dutch islands in the Caribbean. It is considered one of the most demanding airports due to one of the world's shortest commercial runways. The airport was handmade by Microsoft. However, with an additional free mod from FlightSimTO, the airfield has been greatly improved. Animated people, replaces on some ground textures and markings, adds the new fire station halfway down the runway, and many other changes bring the airport to life. Great work! The link to download the free mod is in the video description. For our flight, we use the Britain Norman Islander from Black Box Simulation the typical Hopper Island aircraft for this area. We remove the chocks, engine covers and boarding steps and switch on the battery and generators. We set the propeller lever and the mixture to maximum and turned on the fuel supply. Then we prime fuel by moving the throttle back and forth several times while we turn on the fuel pumps. We switch on the standby magnetos and start the right engine first and then the left one. When igniting, we activate the second magnetos. We switch on the appropriate lighting and let the propellers warm up by giving them a little throttle. It is important that we do not idle, otherwise the engines could stop working. We deactivate the fuel pumps, close the doors and we are ready to taxi. The fun can begin. With an extremely short runway of 520 meters and the extreme winds, takeoffs and landings are a challenge. The airport can only be flown to with a special permit from the Dutch Aviation Authority. For a long time, the island of Saba was considered unsuitable for the construction of an airport due to its mountainous profile, which lacks large flat areas. But after Remy de Heinen made a spectacular landing on a provisional runway in February 1959, an airport was built on the spot. The runway on Saba is so short that rolling out is not possible, and you would inevitably end up in the sea if you don't come to a stop early enough. There are also no taxiways. Pilots have to turn the plane on the runway and make a so-called backtrack. I tried several landings with the Britain Norman Islander. And in fact, I only rarely manage to land. Respect to the pilots for whom these flights are part of their everyday routine.
We are now leaving Saba and flying the short 30-mile flight to San Barthélemy. On the way, we have a little time to test the Britain Norman Islander from Black Box Simulation. How realistic is it? The official performance tables show us a maximum speed of 150 knots and the stall speed should be under 40 knots. Let's test it in the flight simulator. We set the weight to a minimum and climb to 3,000 feet. Wow, we actually reach a maximum speed of almost 150 knots in level flight. Well simulated! The stall speed also seems to correspond to reality. Just under 40 knots, the machine breaks out and stalls. It feels realistic. Well done, black box simulation. Now let's climb and test the maximum height. Our climb will take a little while. Time to get to know the aircraft a little. The Britain Norman Islander is a versatile, robust, light aircraft that is particularly appreciated in remote and rural areas. It was developed in the 1960s and more than 1,300 examples have been built to date. The Islander is used for both passenger and cargo transport. Thanks to its modular design, the interior can be quickly adapted to switch between passenger and cargo missions. In addition to civilian use, the Islander is also used by many armed forces and police units around the world as a reconnaissance, rescue and liaison aircraft. The aircraft has proven to be extremely durable. Many of the first models built in the 1960s are still in use today, which underlines its reliability and solid construction. Numerous variants of the Britain Norman Islander have been developed over the years, including turboprop-powered models that offer further improved performance and range. Black Box Simulation has now also released the Turbo Pro version of the Islander for the flight simulator. We'll take a closer look at it in the next video. Because of the relatively weak engines, we reach our service selling after about half an hour and have to lean the mixture several times. A look at the official tables shows us that it reaches an altitude of about 15,000 feet. But what do we achieve in the flight simulator? We manage 21,300 feet before the air gets too thin and we stall. Unlike the standard Asobo models, the flight behavior at high altitudes feels more realistic and corresponds more to reality. After this short flight, we reach San Barthélemy Island. Even from above, we can see that Microsoft has done a good job here. Detailed landscape, lots of yachts, boats and beaches. It is an island in the Lesser Antilles. It has been an independent French overseas territory since February 2007. It was discovered by Christopher Columbus on his second voyage in 1493 and named in honour of his brother Bartolomeo after his patron saint, the Apostle Bartholomew. Welcome to Gustav Airport, also known as St. Barthélemy Airport, is a public-use airport located in the village of St. John, on the Caribbean island of St. Barthélemy. Due to its very short runway, very close proximity to automotive traffic on a nearby road, and the necessity of a license to land at the airport, the History Channel documentary. Most extreme airports ranked it the third most dangerous airport in the world. The short airstrip is at the base of a gentle slope ending directly on the beach. The arrival descent into runway 10 is extremely steep over the hilltop traffic circle. Departing planes fly right over the heads of sunbathers. Microsoft is doing a great job and the scenery looks great. With a free additional scenery from FlightSim TO, we can greatly improve this area. The ground textures have been replaced. 
the ground markings have been improved and the terminal has been given an interior. A new taxi system has been included in to better reflect reality along with helipads. Animated people and the environment have been greatly improved. As always, the link is in the video description. Let's start the challenge with the landing approach to St. Barthelemy on runway 10. We fly just over the top of a hill that is only a few hundred meters from the runway. Immediately afterwards, we have to descend the plane at a steep angle in order to reach the short, only 650 meter long runway in time. In addition, the approach route leads over a busy road and the wind can be unpredictable on the coast. The landing often ends just a few metres from the turquoise waters of the bay. The steep approach angle makes it difficult to catch the plane just before it touches down. Great fun. I needed several attempts to even land. Have you tried it? What is your landing rate on St. Barth? Only a few more weeks until the final launch of Flight Simulator 2024. I'm excited to see if these great free sceneries from Flight Sim TO will still work then. What about you? Have you already pre-ordered Flight Simulator 2024? Write me your opinion in the comments. I would be happy. I wish everyone a nice week and always a safe landing. Thank you very much for watching.